Welcome. In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 8.1 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says, use the WKB approximation to find the allowed energies of an infinite square well with a shelf of height V0, extending halfway across, um, which is basically what I'm going to show you right here. So we have an infinite square well, as we have seen many times before. All of this is forbidden. The potential is infinite. But in the middle, now we have some V0 only up to A over 2. So the square well goes all the way from 0 to A, but the potential only goes from 0 until A over 2. So that is what we are dealing with here, right? And we can see it described right there. And we want to now express our answers in terms of V0 and um, the nth allowed energy of the unperturbed infinite square well with no shelf. And we can also assume a few things um, like that the uh, that V0 is smaller than the first uh, energy level of the unperturbed infinite square well, um, but we cannot assume that the energy uh, overall is greater than the V0. Um, so either way, we will then compare our results. Now, how do we deal with this? This is simply an infinite square well problem using WKB, and we already saw in the previous video, link in description, uh, or in the playlist, you can also check out my playlist, um, we already found this formula because this is valid for all infinite square wells, all infinite square wells. And what is the momentum here? The momentum is the classically defined momentum, so 2m times e minus v of x, square root, of course. So what is our potential? Well, we are integrating from 0 to a, so we need to consider that. So we integrate now from 0 to a over 2, where our potential has one value. So from in this interval, this is square root of 2m e minus v0, because between the x, of course, between 0 and a over 2, we have this potential right there. But between a over 2 and a, we don't have any potential anymore. It is 0. So for that reason, we simply have square root of 2 m e. And this has to be equal to n pi h bar. Now let's solve these integrals. They are not hard at all. So we get square root of 2 m e minus v0 times a over 2 plus, and here we get square root of 2 m e times a minus a over 2, which is simply a over 2. This is equal to n pi h bar. So now we can um, do a few things. So we can divide by the square root of 2m and by a over 2. So that we are left with square root of e minus v0. Plus, then we have square root of the energy. These, of course, are going to be the energy levels. n pi h bar. And then we have, let's see, so a 2 here we are dividing by the square root of m and also of 2, of course, so of 2m and there's an a. Um, so, and so since we have a square root down here, square root of 2, we can divide this and we get square root of 2 up there. Okay, now what we want to do is solve for the energy. That is our objective. If you want, we can clarify and write this as en. Um, it doesn't really matter much. Um, but just so that you are very sure that this is the energy levels of our problem. So to find the energy, we are going to have to square this entire thing. Um, so doing that here, we get E n minus V zero plus two times square root of E minus V zero times the square root of E n and then plus E n. And this is equal to this thing squared, which is n squared, i squared, h bar squared, 2 divided by, and then we have m a squared. Now, this might look familiar. And if it is, it's because 2 times, uh, if you have a 2 here, 
then this is exactly the energy levels of the unperturbed uh, infinite square well. So basically E0 is n squared pi squared h bar squared divided by 2m a squared. So notice here that if we multiply by 4 on each side, we end up getting what we have here, which is 2 times this. So my point here is that this entire thing is simply 4 times, 4 times the level, 4 times the energy level of the ground state of the unperturbed infinite square well. Um, all right, so that simplifies notation. Now, of course, notice we have two of these ENs, so we can get rid of this one. And now we still have square roots, so let's leave this square root alone. So two square root of E minus V0, EN, of course, let's be consistent, um, square root of EN, this is equal to four times E0 minus two EN, and then plus V0. So now we want to square this again. So personally, I find it easier when I put two of these together, and that way I'm basically solving um, two binomial squares, right? And I don't know, I, I just find that easier, but it doesn't really matter, just do it however you prefer. So this is um, four times en squared minus en v0, and now let's square this part, and we get, um, so from the first term squared, we get 16 e0 squared, then we get minus, or two times these two terms, so we get 4 times 4, so minus 16 e0 en, then we get this part squared, so plus 4 times en squared, and then we get 2 times this entire thing times v0, so we get plus 2v0, and then 4e0 minus 2en, and finally v0 squared, so v0 squared. Now let's see, we got 4en squared here, and 4en squared here. Then we got 4en v0, and let's see, here we got here we have minus 4 en v0 and here we have minus 4 en v0 so we are only left with this term right here that has en so let's pull it to the left so we get 16 en e0 is equal to 16e0 squared plus 8v0e0 plus v0 squared. So let's now isolate our energy. So we get 16 divided by 16 is 1. We get e0 plus v0 over 2. And then finally plus v0 squared divided by 16e0. And there we go. And notice that this is precisely, at least this first part, is exactly what we got using perturbation theory before. And this extra term is negligible if V0 is very small, which is precisely the case in which we did this using perturbation theory. Right? So this result uh, does indeed agree with what we had found in the past. So as you can see, Using this is very, very simple. All we had to do was solve one integral, well, two technically, um, which was ve very, very easy, and then do some algebra to find the energy. And that was it. So as you can see, this is very, very, very simple. Um, even though the derivation maybe of these formulas was not all that simple, maybe it's a bit hard to recall them sometimes, but applying them is very, very, very simple. So by all means, uh, get acquainted with this method. It is, it is very, very powerful. So this was everything for this video. I hope it was useful to you. If it was, 
please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.